Hey, Gopher fans, welcome. It's another edition of Gopher Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck, Mike Grimm, along with Gopher Radio Network sideline reporter Justin Gard and the head coach P.J. Fleck. And a lot to talk about this week. We are uh, certainly thrilled, uh, and I know the head coach was certainly thrilled when last week the news came out while he was on the practice field that uh, Rashad Bateman did get the waiver. He is eligible to play and ready to go from the get-go. And, Coach, uh, first of all, good to see you. And uh, tell us kind of how that day unfolded uh, when you found out the news and, um, and what the emotion was like. Yeah, I mean, everybody probably assumes that I knew way prior to everybody else uh, uh, whether Rashad was going to be eligible or not. But really, it wasn't. Uh, uh, Wednesday morning, I'm on the practice field. We are actually having practice. Garrett Chernoff, our general manager, who's in constant contact, with our compliance office came running over to me and uh, I think I was in the middle of coaching somebody and Garrett comes right up. So it must've been really important. And he's like, just so you know, uh, Rashad just got cleared and I kept it to myself. And then throughout practice, I finally told Rashad at some point. And then right when we got done, Rashad told the entire football team. So uh, we're thankful that the NCAA made that decision. I think it's the right decision for all the players who opted out, who have a chance you know, as adults and with the virus and we made the decision as adults, uh, the Big Ten made a decision to take away the season. So I don't think the kids should have to be able to suffer. So uh, I'm really glad they made that decision, made the right decision. We're very fortunate, very thankful and very humbled that they made that decision. And so is Rashad. And uh, he's had some really good practices that he's built up uh, over the last few days as well. So I know he's very thankful to be back. What was the moment like when he told the team? when you kind of let him – I think he told me on the Gopher podcast that you talked to the team for a minute, then you brought Rashad up, and he announced it. What was that like? Well, it was really quick. I thought he was going to talk a lot longer than he did. Uh, he just <laughs> kind of told him, I'm back. You know, uh, I'm, uh, my main reason being back, one, was a safety, but two, being back with my teammates. He goes, the time I was away from you, I really missed you. You know, let's row. And that was it. Uh, I was expecting maybe even, even, even some more, you know, like – uh, just because everybody's so excited to hear from him. And it was such an emotional ride throughout this whole deal. And uh, we're really excited for him. And he was a man of few words. He just wants to be able to work. And the team accepted him right back. Everybody was clapping. I think everybody was a little bit uh, worried about it, whether he would or wouldn't. Uh, and I'm so glad that the NCAA made the decision as fast as they, were, they did. I think everybody was a little bit in awe and, and, and maybe listening to some more, wanted some more because – they didn't know if he was telling the truth or not. Sometimes I'll, I'll bring them along like I kind of did. I told them, unfortunately, you know, we got some news and kind of went the negative route, get everybody kind of down, then bring them up, you know, with the Rashad Bateman news. And, you know, I think they were all just uh, really, really thankful that he's back on the team. And uh, have you noticed maybe, uh, you know, how much that has uplifted? I mean, I know you, you're, you guys uh, usually practice in a positive environment anyway, but has that been, you know, kind of a boost? Everyone got a little uh, extra bounce in their step? Well, not one player ever makes a team. We know that. Uh, you know, we've had guys that have started, have been out even last year playing against Auburn. And you look at the guys that we had out for that game that were really key influences of where we were in our season or Penn State. But when you have really special players uh, that can make plays like that, it's not just the playmaking ability on the field. It's the leadership. It's helping the young guys develop. It's having an older guy in that room, along with Chris Hoffman Bell and Seth Green, to be able to bring the younger guys along. So I think that's helped. And I think everybody was really glad that happened, where now they have uh, the, the leadership. They have uh, really that, that, that one guy to look at, that leadership to be able to say how it is and, and what it looks like and what the example is. And, you know, I think Rashad's done a great job of handling all of it. It's been very tough for him. It's been emotional. Um, this last five, six months has been emotional for him. And to be able to be back with his teammates, you know, he made a comment the other day, I haven't been this happy in a long time. And, and when players out back in for all the right reasons and you hear that, uh, that spreads throughout the team. So it wasn't like if he didn't play, what are we going to do? But to have him back, we know we're a better football team with him, uh, with his ability, with his leadership, with his playmaking ability. And will that with that sense of security for the wide receiver room as well. And not only that, you know, he's going to make an impact off the field by what he's wearing on the field this year, changing to number zero. That was part of his announcement and coming back. Not only am I coming back, I'm switching from 13 to zero in terms of zero racism at the University of Minnesota and on the football team. What was that process like? You mentioned that you guys had a conversation that he, he thought, hey, if I can have zero, this is what I'd like to do. Um, so not only is he coming back to help you on the football team, he's also making a pretty powerful statement there. Well, it's a very powerful statement that there's zero tolerance at the University of Minnesota 
also zero tolerance within our rowboat culture uh, for any type of racism whatsoever. And so I think he's making a huge statement with that. And I think that's, that's how Rashad's mind's always thinking. How can I be part of change? How can I be able to influence? And that's what leadership does. And he's doing it in a very positive way. Uh, we've also met with our football team over the last several months about how we're as a football team uh, going to be able to continue to move forward and create conversation and keep conversation going. And that's where this HERE campaign, H-E-R-E, is coming into play. That was really set by our players, our leadership council, certain members of our team that we've been having these certain meetings, uh, these real talk meetings with. And uh, that, that stands for helping end racism with education. George Floyd was killed right here in Minneapolis. That's where the HERE comes from. The E-R-E, if you look it up in the, in, in the, in the dictionary, it stands for uh, was ending before so if you take the ERE and you put the H on there, it stands for here where George Floyd was killed. We want to end racism, but we want to end racism with education. So we've started really uh, once a month having uh, a, a professor come in and teach where racism came from. What is racism? Identifying the certain aspects of racism, not only teaching black history, but also focusing on racism in general of how we can end it as a society, as, as future husbands, future fathers that our players are going to be, and really learn about educate, or learn about racism. And so we can be able to be the part of the change and we can be able to be the example of what the world should look like. So there's a lot going on within our program with our HERE campaign uh, that our players wanna be able to be, be big advocates for, keep the racism conversations going of how we, it's gonna take all of us for this to happen and uh, where our focus should be. So Rashad wanted to be a part of that with wearing number zero. We support him 100%. And I want people to be able to support the HERE campaign as well and rally around that and know what that is uh, by, 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 by educating ourselves um, as we continue to move forward in our society. Garzi, you mentioned you talked to, uh, to Rashad Bateman on this week's Gopher podcast. Uh, here's a quick chance for you for people listening uh, here on the show. Uh, how can people hear the, the entire podcast with Rashad, and how much did he, did he hit on, on this particular subject? Well, he didn't, uh, he didn't hit on the HERE uh, campaign, which is good. I'm glad we brought that up. I'm curious to learn more about that. But he, he mentioned the same thing that Coach talked about, that uh, he's the happiest he's been in a long time. He said the moment telling the team was pretty cool, that Coach let him do that, and um, he's just obviously excited to be back. And um, we talked about the switching to number zero. And to answer your question, you can get it wherever you get your podcast, whether it's iHeartRadio app, whether it's Spotify, whether it's Apple Podcasts, uh, and gophersports.com I know has a link to it as well. So I appreciate uh, him coming on last week. I know he's uh, talking to the media this week as well a little bit more. But if you want to hear Rashad for 15 or 20 minutes, kind of take you through the process of the last six months, I'd highly recommend it. Coach, on the field, I mean, obviously, you're talking about the returning receiver of the year in the Big Ten. Uh, this is a guy that obviously has had an impact. What does he do for an offense? Uh, what can he do for go for football? I mean, obviously, we have two years of evidence of what it means. And what does it mean now that you know he's in the fold from now until, you know, that opener where you can, you know, put maybe together a practice plan in terms of how, how you want to use him? But two, you know, what, what does that mean to have him back from a football sense? Well, when you're coming up with a defensive game plan, you have to, first of all, say who, who is not going to beat you? How are you going to build your defensive plan around the playmakers that they have and how can we eliminate them or minimize them to be able to beat us, right? And so Rashad does that. Uh, there's a lot of people that have to stop the running game and we know that, have to stop our RPO game. We know that. But Rashad gives us the ability to not only have him as a big-time threat, it allows the others to be in single coverage, like the Chris Altman Bells and guys like that. Very similar to what Tyler Johnson did for Rashad, uh, not only last year, but two years ago. Uh, and as we got closer and, and got longer throughout the year, maybe midway through the year to, to the end of the year, now they had to focus on every single player and not just Tyler. Now you had to focus on Rashad. It's the same thing. So it allows you to be able to do multiple things, do everything you can to, to, to make the defenses as simplistic as you can, because you're not just taking away one person anymore. If you want to take away Rashad, that's going to help Chris Altman Bell. Plus, it's going to help our running game taking another hat out of, out, out of the box. It allows if teams want to be able to play man coverage uh, with somebody over the top. Again, it gives Rashad one-on-one -on -one coverage with somebody. If they're going to play his own coverage, whether it's too high, it allows for two other people to be outside the box. 
If you're going to play us in quarters, it allows for the post game to be able to come into play. So there's so many different options when you have a playmaker like Rashad because he can expand the field vertically, horizontally. He's a really good run blocker as well. And it allows for all of our other playmakers to be able, if you're a running back, to have other people out of the box. And if you're another wide out, to have, a, to have multiple guys in the secondary focusing on somebody else. So it does a lot. One of the things we talked about on the podcast, Coach, towards the end was I just asked him what he's hoping to work on this year, where he's trying to improve. And I, I clumsily asked it as he's looking forward to the NFL, and he snapped me right back and said, I'm not worried about that anymore, um, not worried about my draft status or anything. So I had to rephrase it, and I said, okay, so for this year, but just as an individual, as a wide receiver, as a total wide receiver, where are you looking to improve? And he basically said, I'm, I'm really focusing on everything. As his coach, and, and maybe in conjunction with Matt Simon, where are you looking for him to improve, or where do you think he still has room to grow as a receiver? Well, he's so talented, right? I mean, he's so talented in everything he does naturally. I think just becoming an overall football player and being able to understand the spatial awareness part of being a wide receiver, understanding you know when to be able to be in a, a possession catch, when to be able to catch and run, um, you know all what kind of you know I think mastering the entire system from every position, uh, and being able to to expand his knowledge of the entire pass game of how one thing affects the others. But he's so dynamic and everything athletically. But I think it's just understanding the whole part of how he fits within the whole system and expanding the multiple positions that he continued to play. And the one thing you mentioned, and we saw this last year, once teams started to to uh, maybe, you know, focus on him a little bit more in the game plan. One, as you mentioned, it opened up for Tyler. But this guy and kid continued to produce even when teams were double covering him. I mean, you have a nice set of receivers when you look at uh, the idea of going to get a ball in traffic. I mean, Rashad can go uh, chase down a ball. If, if he's in double coverage, he can go up and get a ball. And um, uh, Chris Altman-Bell also has shown that skill. But um, back to Bateman in regard to just producing, even when he's been doubled or sometimes tripled, he's been able to, uh, to put up big numbers. Well, that just shows the type of playmaking ability he has. You know, and I think the one thing that, you know, he'll continue to get better at that you want from a receiver is the physicality part, catching the ball in traffic, being able to get every 50-50 ball uh, that's in the air. Those got to be 100-0 to type balls, not 50-50 balls. And I think as he's built his body, as he's gotten stronger, as he's gained weight, I think that's only going to help him. You know, he's still a really young player when you look at his age. So his body's not done maturing yet. And when that happens, there's going to be another physicality part to his game that he, he gets away with right now with the speed part of his game and the explosion part. But when it does get into a really physical battle, his maturity is going to be able to help him over the next 11, 12 weeks, which, you know, after that, I hope we have him more. But if not, you know, I just appreciate his commitment to this. He hasn't talked about the NFL, hasn't talked about what's going to happen next year. He said, Coach, I'm just focused on this year, period. And I'm 100% in. If I wasn't 100% in, and my mind was somewhere else, I wouldn't be back. So I, he's completely dedicated to making himself the best player and best wide receiver and the best teammate he can be. And I give him a lot of credit for it. All right, we're due for our first break. We'll take that now. We'll come back. Segment two is on the way. We want to thank Sunbelt Business Advisors. Onward for Business, they present the Go for Football Weekly with PJ Flex Show. They want you to be on, your, on their team when you buy or sell a business. Onward for Business is the one-stop shop for buying or selling your business or for payroll, insurance, bookkeeping, and more. Onward, Sunbelt Business Advisors, proud to sponsor Go for Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck. Let's uh, go into break. We'll have segment two coming up. This is Go for Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck from Learfield IMG College. Welcome back. It's Gopher Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck. Segment two, Grim and Guard with you, along with Gopher Football coach P.J. Fleck. And, Coach, a week ago at this time when we were talking about practices, you were telling us that uh, it is a little bit tricky with uh, some of the numbers and some of the things that have been going on in regard to contact tracing and guys who maybe test negative but still have to sit out a day just to make sure and all that stuff. Has it gotten better, uh, or are you guys still fighting some of that as uh, practice continues here this week? 
No, it's gotten a lot better. You know, we're into the rapid testing every single day. Uh, that way we know if somebody's contagious immediately. It's starting to eliminate all the contact tracing, which is absolutely critical to play college football. And that's what everybody was waiting for. Uh, our players have been unbelievable with, the, with taking the tests, uh, doing everything they can to keep themselves in this bubble. Um, and we're doing really well. Our numbers are really good, but we don't take one day for granted. You know, that's the one thing is we told our players, you've got to have the most fun you've ever had right here in our facility. Uh, if you're having more fun outside our facility, then we're going to risk the ability uh, for guys to be infected on this football team and, have, and, and you're going to lose out on a lot of football games. So everybody's making sacrifices for the next 11, 12 weeks. We all know what we have to do. We all know how we have to do it. We've uh, learned over the last few months of what's, what, 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 how it can spread what we can do, how we can change our habits. And I think our players have really respected that. Doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. Doesn't mean you can't get it while you do all those things. But, you know, our players have really been mature about handling the situation, and I give them a lot of credit for doing it. Does it resonate with them when you wake up on a Sunday morning, for example, and you find out that Cam Newton's out and this great story that's going on in New England, this reclamation of, of Bill Belichick, you know, retooling and Cam Newton kind of retooling, all of a sudden he's out and the game's delayed. I mean, is that something that comes up that you guys make mention of? Yeah, I mean, it, we do because it can happen to anybody. And it happens to superstars in the National Football League. It happens to guys that are even, you know, quarantining themselves, staying in bubbles, doing everything they can to stay away from people, wearing masks. It, can, it, can, it lowers the risk. It doesn't guarantee you won't get it, right. right? So I think it's just doing everything we can to lower the chances that our players get it. And they're starting to realize that it doesn't matter who you are, which we've said for months and months and months. But when, when players in the NFL get it, and it's a guy like Cam Newton, I think it rings home a little bit more to them. You know, you're always finding cultural ways to teach us lifetime lesson. Well, there's this lesson right now of COVID-19. Well, a cultural way is having a Cam Newton type guy have it. And, and it really strikes home to the players. But uh, we've been very proactive with all of that and showing them who has it and how easy it is to catch. Uh, we've had some guys, obviously, within our own building who have had it. So they know how easy it is and where it is and how fast they can get it if they don't follow all the protocols uh, to be able to limit their chances. You mentioned the testing, the daily testing started, the rapid results, uh, and, and I don't know how much you can, you can let on or how much you can tell us, and I don't know what the privacy issues are, but what is the process like and how quickly do you find out? Uh, tell us what you can about kind of how that's going. Yeah, the process, we do it right there at our indoor and, you know, Garrett Chernoff and uh, our medical team and, and Mike Sipniak and our trainers and our doctors have made it so simple for our players. Uh, basically, go in the indoor, you take a swab, you do it through your nose, uh, and then you wait about 10 to 15 minutes, and then you get your results back. Uh, while you're waiting, you have to be six feet apart, social distance on completely other side of the indoor, um, and everybody has to be masked up and making sure you wait for your results, and then you get your results, and, and then you go from there. So uh, everybody's made it very painless, very simple, uh, and doing everything we can to keep our environment the safe we can possibly have it. So where are you in the uh, camp schedule right now? Like where, where would you like to be, you know, less than three weeks out? Where would you typically be, I guess? And then wh where are you kind of in the camp schedule right now as it pertains to developing, installing, and then obviously looking towards Michigan too? You know, JG, that's a great question because we always ask ourselves exactly what you said. Where would we be if we had a normal season and a normal training camp right now? The one thing is we've had more football than we've ever had in a normal season. So the football time and meetings and installs, meetings, installs. Now, on-field practice time has been a lot less than we normally have, but the installs are there. And so what we're doing is, is right now we, just, we basically just had one of our first scrimmages. And usually we have one scrimmage throughout training camp, and it's about this time. It's either between now or Saturday. We usually have it on a Tuesday or Thursday. But we have another big scrimmage coming up on Saturday. Um, but again, we've been able to put in a 40 play, play it here, or another 40 play, play it here, maybe more than we normally would have done in training camp. So we're, we're, we're pretty much where we would have been in training camp, but it's kind of condensed. Um, it, it's been a combination of what we did prior, what we're doing now, what we need to be able to look forward to. There's a lot of Michigan being involved in that. So it's not only the special teams parts of every special situation, every small situation, it's the offensive part of every situation, every defensive situation, and then we're also doing Michigan as well. So it's kind of the smorgasbord, this very eclectic practice schedule, which I love, which adds more 
organized chaos to practice every single day. But our players have handled it very well. It's been every other day. We have walkthroughs the next day. Uh, on the days we don't practice, we've been going every single day, which has been great for our players to be able to constantly get football every day, except Mondays is their day off. But I, I think it's been really beneficial. I think we're going at a pace that's perfect for us. And we talk about this word just right has to be right for us. And I think it's just right of what we're doing for the Gopher football program. Might not be what other people are doing, but for us and where we're at as a football team and who we have back and what type of team we have uh, and the COVID situation that everyone has for us is just right. You've talked about this, especially in fall camp before, that oftentimes you leave the practice field happy because the offense might have looked good, but disappointed because maybe that means the defense didn't look good or vice versa. Um, are you finding that to be the case? And at this point, I think the common thought would be that the offense is probably a little ahead. They have more returners. Um, are you seeing that? Or how, how, what is your mindset? What have you seen from practices at this point? Well, what makes, what makes practice a little more challenging these days is you could have a guy, and before the rapid testing, so if you had guys who tested positive, they were out, obviously, their 10-day quarantine, and then they'd have a series of contacts. And now all of a sudden, those contacts are now out 14 days. Right. So you had to be able, if they were positive, they'd have this acclimation back period. If their contacts were out 14 days and prior to the daily testing, if you were part of that testing positive or that contact, let's say it was last Monday, you tested and we, however many guys you have that are either in contact or positive come Wednesday, you can't opt back in. Okay. So you can't test back in. You have to serve your two week time. Uh, even as a contact. So we're finally getting some of those players back uh, with that type of rapid testing and getting those guys acclimated. So we've had some time to be able to get a lot of things, but we've also missed some guys. So we're kind of in that middle. Uh, I've never felt comfortable about where we're at. I never do when we get in training camp. Sometimes spring ball, you go home somewhat happy because you know you got a lot of time to fix it. Training camp, there's a short amount of time and you got to get moving. So there's some guys we're getting back, which is great. We got to get them full contact. We got to get them in the co contact drills. So you're, you're, you're constantly taking all this time that you've had over, that you've missed over the year and you're smoking it into a few weeks, but you got to do it strategically and you got to do it just right. And you can't take 10 pounds of, 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 of peanuts and stick it in a one pound bag, right? So you, you can't do that. And so you have to be very careful and strategic of how you go about doing it. But we got, Pretty much most of our guys back, uh, and we're really excited about this week coming up. Uh, and we should have close to a full football team uh, this week, which is really good. That was kind of where I wanted to go next is training camp. It always feels like you don't have enough time. At least that's every coach that we've ever talked to. You're always figuring out are we where we need to be in relation to other teams or where we need to be in relation to where we've been before. So how do you even calibrate that using the past as a guide? Because the past really has nothing to do with anything that you're doing right now. Well, I think the past is about where we are as a football team with installs. You know, how good do we feel about, you know, two minute? How good do we feel about our special situations, end game situations? How do we feel about all the special situations on special teams? You know, we not only have a scrimmage, but we have a mock scrimmage. So you missed out on spring ball. So you've got to be able to catch up somehow, some way with that without overexerting your players. We've been going every other day to be able to give them breaks in between and walkthroughs, but they're never getting away from that constant football mental part of the game uh, and that mental stress that you have to be able to have to play well. So with the combination of all of it, JG, I mean, I, I wish I could sit there and break it all down for you. Um, the schedule is very different, very unique. I've got to look at my own schedule five, six times during the day to know what's next because it constantly changes based on new rules, new things that get brought in. Other players I've, all of a sudden are out. New players are back in. Everybody has a different time frame that way. So, you know, it, it's been definitely challenging. But again, it's, it, it keeps you on your toes. It's a lot of fun as well. But again, like I said, this just right mentality has to be what we're doing. And every day has to be evaluated. As you said, just because we did it in last training camp or just because it's training camp time doesn't mean it's going to feel or look like a normal training camp. But you've got to get a lot of the things that you're going to get during training camp during this time, but you have to give it, get it during this unique time as well. I guess is the best way to describe it. There, there's, there's never a boring day. I promise you that, J.G. <laughs> well, let's uh, do another break here, and we'll continue to talk Golden Go for football. Uh, we are with uh, Justin Gard and uh, the head coach, P.J. Fleck. My name is Mike Grimm. Stay with us. It's Go for Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck from Learfield IMG College. 
Welcome back. It's Gopher Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck. Mike Grimm along with Justin Gard of the head coach, P.J. Fleck, as uh, we are getting uh, closer and closer now to a uh, game week, Minnesota and Michigan uh, for the Little Brown Jug, October the 24th at TCF Bank Stadium. And uh, a lot to talk about, certainly, and Coach, uh, we've talked position groups over the last couple of, uh, of weeks, uh, different ones, and one spot we haven't talked about uh, in great detail is the tight ends. And in Minnesota, a lot of people love to talk about tight ends, a long tradition of good tight ends. And I know you feel really good about the group of tight ends. You have, what, four or five tight ends that have significant experience. And I know you're excited about some other guys. And some of them are from in-state. Some of them are from, um, you know, out of state. Some of them are guys that you inherited. Some of them are guys you brought in. I mean, it's a pretty interesting mix of, of, of tight ends you've got. It really is, you know, and I think that's one thing Coach Sanford's always brought to the offenses that he's been a part of is involving the tight end as much as you possibly can. But we're starting to get some guys making a lot of plays at the tight end position, you know, whether it was numbers, whether it's playmaking ability, uh, whether it's where we are in, the, in rebuilding our program with the numbers of tight ends. But when you look at guys like Brevin Span Ford and Co. Keith and Bryce Witham, uh, and you see those guys have been around for a while, and uh, those guys are really talented. You know, Jake Paulson, I mean, there's another guy who's been around for a while. We've got four tight ends we feel like we can put in the game at any time, which gives us really big flexibility with our personnel packages. But we also got guys who've been around for a while that can also make some plays. Uh, Brevin Span Ford, big 6'7", 265-pound tight end that can really run, can really play in space. He's going to give us a different dimension with not only Chris Altman Bell and Rashad Bateman and then Mohamed Ibrahim and our running backs, so we feel better than we've ever felt about the tight end position here in our last three years here. Uh, and I think our fans are going to be excited about the evolution of that position. Yeah, and a couple of uh, follow-ups on that spot. When you, when you think about, you know, you talked about move, making 50-50 balls, 100-0 uh, balls um, with – Span Ford size, and I know you've got uh, other guys. I mean, Keeft is a road grader, right? He's a blocker. He, I know he's caught, uh, you know, he had a two-point conversion, uh, you know, and, and, he, and he's, uh, you know, an opportunist there. But um, Span Ford can be a red zone guy, right? I mean, he's a guy that can go get it. He's 6'7", maybe 6'9". I mean, uh, those 50-50 balls can, be, can uh, become those 100-0 to zero balls you want. Yeah, I mean, we need all of them to go to go make plays. You know, they all need to be playmakers. And I think they've evolved. Uh, Clay Patterson, our tight end coach, has done a great job developing our tight end position. But when you're talking about Brevin, he can be a threat anywhere, not just in the green zone. You know, I mean, that's one thing that he's got to evolve. I think when everybody sees him, they think mismatches inside the green zone. That's great. He does. But he's also got to be able to play like a wide receiver in the open field, uh, in the middle of the field. And he's also got to be able to play uh, like an offensive lineman when he's run blocking. And I think that's where we've evolved as tight ends is, is guys are getting better at becoming a really good route runner, ball catcher, but also a really good blocker at the same time, where I thought when we first got here, we had a bunch of, you know, uh, road grading, blocking tight ends, period. Well, now I think we're having more of a hybrid type tight end that can do both. And you don't have to sacrifice one for the other. I think that was part of um, Jake Paulson's problem in that Nebraska game last year. He was blocking so well for the first, you know, two quarters. And when he came time to make that catch wide open, his hands were broken. You know, that's, that's what I said at the end. Uh, but the, it's a good example. Bryce with him in the Outback Bowl is a guy that people might not necessarily have heard of. And you've talked a lot about we're going to need everybody at some point this year. That's, all, that's a great example of a guy needed to step in and really hadn't had a ton of time or a ton of stuff run for him. And two of the most important plays of the ball game were a guy that a lot of Gopher fans might have been looking at, who, who is this guy? Who, who's this Bryce Witham guy? Yeah, we never know when our numbers are going to be called, you know, and I think that's what the whole team's got to be able to understand. You know, when you've got a team that has one good player, everybody looks to that one player to make a play, and then nobody else can make a play, you're probably not going to be very good. The more people who can step in, step up, prove that they can make plays, are going to get more opportunities because your opportunities are earned. You know, if you show you can make those plays in those crucial moments, you're going to get opportunities to make them. And then those opportunities will create more opportunities. But nothing is given in our program. Everything is earned. And I think the tight end positions have known that. They've earned that. And I look forward to watching them this year. One of my favorite things about the tight end spot is when you guys have gone to that uh, green line with Seth Green back there, that, uh, whether it's uh, Span Ford or Keith or whatever they run, you guys run one of those guys in motion and just watching – the poor linebacker safety trying to figure out how to tackle Seth Green. They never get to Seth Green because 
the tight end just, uh, you know, the Maryland game. I think you could have run that play the entire Maryland game. That's how effective that play was with how those tight ends were just crushing down on that block. Uh, I mean, it's kind of fun to watch those tight ends. And for them, I suppose that's kind of their payday to be able to, to crush a guy like that in, in a play like that and see a touchdown score. Well, there's, the more options you have, the better offense you're going to be. And that's at every position, whether that's Wildcat, whether that's a normal position like tight end, wide receiver. The more options and the more playmakers you have uh, to make your offense harder to defend, the better you're going to be. Uh, guys like Austin Henderson, who's a true freshman, is going to be a really special player here. The Nick Callerups right over from YZ, uh, uh, who's been through a lot, you know. And these guys are really good players. I mean, they're calling Nick Callerup the players do young Gronk. He's, just, he's massive, right? And he is a nasty player as a freshman. So we feel like this position is something we can continue to build on. We feel like we got really good depth there. Uh, we're taking one for the 2021 class. Uh, we feel really good there too. So, you know, this is somewhere where we've got to be able to create depth because when the older guys move on after this year, you know, we've got to be able to have depth behind that. Uh, and that's where the, the recruiting and development is really going to take place. What has Coach Sanford brought in terms of the tight end? You hinted at it a little bit, but I know that that's something that he's emphasized at, at some of his spots, and people that follow you theorize that we are going to see more from that position group than we've seen. What's his philosophy been with that position in terms of integrating them in? Well, I think that with any offensive coordinator's philosophy, it's, you know, give me enough playmakers to make plays at every position, and we're going to find ways to score a lot of points, right? And when you're looking at the tight end position, it's a critical port, part of our, our offense. You know, last year we're a huge 11 personnel team. Uh, I'm not sure how much that's going to change. Probably not a ton. But when you look at our tight end position, they give us the ability to be in multiple personnel grouping settings, putting stress on a defense with personnel groupings, but also not just the grouping, but the weapons that can hurt you with inside that grouping and how you have to defend that. So I think that's what he's going to be able to do. You know, without giving away everything that we want to do and who we're going to do it with, I think that's as simple as we can possibly be. And then uh, last thing about that, um, uh, in relation to the tight end, uh, the quarterback spot. Let, let's uh, briefly uh, hit on that before we take our final break. Obviously, Tanner Morgan is the returning All Big Ten second team quarterback. Um, obviously, you also have a guy with starting experience in, uh, in Zach Anikstead, and then you've got young guys uh, that, that I know you're excited about. Uh, how has a quarterback spot looked up to this point? Well, I'm really excited about the young guys we have on this football team, right? The Cole Kramers and the Jacob Clarks. I think they've taken huge steps in the offseason. And I think they've taken a lot of big steps with, um, with, with Coach Sanford being their coach uh, from the technical and fundamental standpoint. Uh, then you look at Zach. Zach's played some football for us, but he's been awesome. He's getting a lot better. You can see Zach maturing in the quarterback position a lot uh, and not just throwing the ball to the open guy, knowing the offense. It's about expanding that. It's about knowing what kind of ball needs to be thrown in that particular situation. His leadership ability is getting better. He's becoming more of an influencer. Uh, and that takes time. And then you have Tanner, which I think he's become more technically sound, better in the fundamental department, more accurate, a better mastery of the system, but also breaking down his game from the waist down, not just the waist up but the waist down and his, his pocket movement, his pocket presence, his feel in the pocket, being able to throw on the run, uh, doing all those certain things. So I love the development of our quarterbacks. It's going to be a very unique year. Everybody knows that. Look around college football, what's happening, who's winning, how they're winning, how many people are out. This is one of those years that's absolutely crazy, uh, but it's one of those things that we're prepared for. We feel like we're prepared for, and we feel like we're preparing the right way for it. All right, let's take our final break. We'll have our final segment when we come back. We also want to remind you, if you've missed any portion of tonight's show, you can always catch it on demand on the Golden Gopher podcast. You can download it, subscribe, wherever you get your podcast details as well at gophersports.com. Stay with us. One more segment. It's Gopher Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck from Learfield IMG College. Welcome back. It's our final segment, Gopher Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck. We want to thank our uh, sponsor, Sunbelt Business Advisors, for helping us through this. And Mike Grimm, along with Justin Gard and P.J. Fleck. And, Coach, uh, to start this segment, I did want to ask you a little bit, and I know you can't get real specific about it, but um, high school football is back this week in Minnesota. Um, and I wanted to know what your thoughts are on that, how important that is. Certainly the seniors, I would think, especially that are currently in high school, have to be thrilled to get their chance, assuming that they can uh, make it a 
safe situation. Um, I was in my home state of Iowa this past weekend and went watched a high school football game at my old high school, which was so fun just to, you know, watch kids going out and, uh, and playing. And there's some, you know, they're playing at a high level, I might add. They're, they, you know, they, they, they beat a ranked team, so that was fun. But Did you um, wear your letter jacket, Grimmer? Did you oh, wear your I, old letter jacket to the game? Uh, no, there's too, too many letters and chevrons and all that stuff on that Didn't jacket. want to show them up. Yeah, I got you. The, the youngsters up. But um, I did wear, you know, I did wear a nice hat. But, uh, uh, I, I, you know, not, not to belabor it. What is, uh, how important is it that for these kids to have high school football here in Minnesota? Well, first and foremost, the, the safety is their number one issue. I think there's a lot of state guidelines based on what COVID-19 looks like in your state that, you know, I'm not a doctor and, and people have to follow and it's frustrating and it's hard. Uh, but those are the, those are the things to keep people safe. And the people who are more educated than me are making those decisions uh, to keep young people safe and to, uh, and, and to keep not only young people safe, but the spread of the virus going to the, their loved ones, their parents, their grandparents, their great grandparents to keep them healthy and keep them alive and keep them safe. So I get all of it, but I do think that football is really healthy. Uh, I, I think it's a, you know, a, I think it's wonderful that the high school here in the state of Minnesota is back on. I think it's wonderful for the seniors as long as it can be done in a very safe environment. And these young people don't have the ability to spread it to other people. Um, nobody wants just foolish decisions. Uh, they want well thought out, educated decisions to be able to keep everybody safe. But I'm a football coach. You're asking a football coach about how does it feel to have high school football back in the state? I love it. Uh, football's done so much for my life. It's done so much for so many of our coaches' lives and our players' lives. It's given avenues to places we've only dreamed of being both on the field and off the field. So uh, it, it's wonderful to be back. Uh, I think it's great for people's mental health to be back around a team, playing something that's normal for them. You know, some of us that coach football, play football, that's our normalcy. Uh, and when, you, when that's gone, uh, we don't really know what to do with ourselves. And sometimes in high school, it's the same thing. You take high school sports away for whatever reason it is, that's that form of normalcy that people have. That's a form of, of helping kids get away from certain environments that maybe they really need to get away from. It's their escape. And to have that back, I think it's really healthy. It's really positive for the state of Minnesota. But I also understand of how long it took to get to this point. And every decision was made for the health and safety and well-being for all the players on that field and all their families and anybody they come in contact with. One, one follow-up on that in relation to, to football. Um, for many of these kids, it'll be the last time they get to play football, right? They probably won't go on and play college football. For some, uh, maybe it's a Division three or Division two, And then for others, a select few, this senior season might mean the difference between getting a scholarship, whether it's at Minnesota or some other place. How important is it, again, assuming safety for the sake of our discussion, uh, how important is it for some of these seniors uh, to, um, uh, to, to be able to show on tape? I mean, as a staff, how much do you watch senior tape? Obviously, you have guys that have never played it down yet or, you know, that you had accepted a scholarship or they accepted a scholarship that hadn't played senior football yet. But for many senior tape is pretty important right well it's really important you know it's really important for what they do afterwards and if they can get a scholarship or not we evaluate senior film very heavily and rightfully so you should we understand the conditions that everybody's in and the terms that everybody's under uh it makes it very difficult for a lot of kids that are going to start early who might not even be starting sports until the spring of their senior season who might not have the senior season that they have they're going to go to college before their senior season and graduate before their senior season. So I think everybody always talks about this memorable senior year. The one thing we can say about the 2020 class is uh, they are going to have a very memorable senior year. Uh, it's going to be memorable for them. Uh, maybe not the way that they wanted, uh, but it's, it's one of those ways that they can take it. If they are going to play, they know that they've got a short amount of time, just like we do have a short amount of time to show what you can do. But I think everybody understands that. I think it also could possibly help some of the lower levels get even more talent than they have of guys who are looked over, guys that are missed, uh, and guys that at this level are full. So, um, you know, I, I think it could open a lot of other avenues that might not have been open before as well. But uh, wish everybody luck. Uh, wish everybody all the best in the state of Minnesota who's going out there and competing, uh, coming up here in the high school football season, being re ready to begin and kick off and start. I know it's really exciting for those seniors for sure. Well, typically, and we say typically a lot, even though nothing's typical anymore, but typically during a high school football season, you would be out at some games in the state. Your staff would be out at some games in the state. You'd certainly be checking in with coaches and various players from all over the state. Coaches would be coming in to watch your team practice, especially in fall camp. So how have you been able to stay connected 
as best you can. We can maybe talk about this more next week too, but to stay connected to, to coaches and players that ordinarily at this time of year, you'd probably be seeing a lot more of. Well, you got to do more Zooms. You know, we do a lot more family Zooms, right? More parent Zooms with our committed guys or guys who aren't committed. We do a lot of Zooms with some coaches. We'll do a lot of coach talk and coach speak and, and coach board work with certain coaches that you normally do when you kind of go into that office and hang out with that coach for a while. Uh, we're doing a lot more recruit connection uh, through Zoom the best we can, multiple, you know, players on Zooms and things like that that you possibly can have uh, that you're allowed to. So, uh, it's being creative. I think that's the best way to say is be creative and find a way to be able to do what you used to do, but do it virtually. Cause that's the only option we have with everything being dead through January. Um, it makes it difficult, but the amount of film that we have is still the same. What we're watching is the same. We're getting a lot more workout video sent, which is I think important too, but recruiting is everything and that can't stop. Well, what also can't stop, I suppose, is game prep. And I know a week ago you talked about the idea that you were having a couple of segments uh, during the week looking ahead to Michigan. Has that cranked up a little this week as we inch a little closer to that opener and the battle for the little brown jug? It has. You know, we've been, we've been watching all of our opponents all offseason. We've been game planning all of our opponents all offseason uh, when we sat there and had the time that we had. Uh, was when everybody said, what are we going to do with our time? That's what we did with our time. Uh, and that's why a lot of our coaches were working even more than they'd be working in, in the office here or working at home because we were able to keep on football the entire time without the recruiting piece of going and traveling. But we've been studying Michigan for a while now. We've been working on Michigan in practice for a while now. They're very talented. They're Michigan. I don't think that's very hard to understand. I mean, Coach Harbaugh's won nine-plus games there since he's been there every year. Uh, they're very good, very talented, got a lot of skill on that team, kind of like an Auburn or a Penn State or people like that that constantly just reload. They don't have to rebuild. They just reload. Uh, quarterback's big. He's fast. He can run. He can throw it. Guy can throw it 75 yards in the air. Uh, their defense is really good. Coach Brown's one of the best defensive coordinators in the country, always comes up with unique schemes for everybody that they play. Uh, they've got weapons everywhere. they got returners everywhere. Uh, they're very, very talented. And to open the year for us, uh, it's a wonderful challenge for our football team. Uh, but they're a very, very good football team, well coached. Well, and certainly we'll uh, hit more on the Wolverines as we uh, uh, inch, as we mentioned, closer to that opener uh, later on this month. Well, that will do it for our time. It's been fun. Time goes fast. It's been uh, certainly fun to chat about Rashad Bateman and all that he's meant and what that will happen. And then the rest of this group, it's kind of exciting. We're, we're getting closer, Coach. We're getting a lot closer, you know, uh, kickoff's almost here. So it's unique, it's different, but it's still football. And uh, we're really excited about it. So I know all of our fans can't be in TCF Bank Stadium, but hope everybody enjoys their driveway tailgates just the same <laughs> as they were here at TCF. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Guardsy, good to see you. We'll talk to you next week. You got it, brother. Be good. All right. Sounds good. That is Go for Football Weekly with P.J. Fleck from Learfield IMG College.